Hi, everyone. So my name is Matilda. I'm an enablement operations strategist from Perpetua. Today, I'm joined by Adrian, Senior Performance Marketing Manager from Branded, and Patrick, Emerging Channels Lead from Perpetua. Very excited to kick this conversation off. So um, everyone here is aware that Amazon is an enormous online platform, which provides access to millions of customers with high purchase intent. But with increased competition and more advertisers entering the space, Amazon advertising is simply not enough to generate sufficient sales and product views, which is why we thought that this conversation was really important. Um, exploring new avenues and adding external traffic will definitely help you reach wider audiences while also boosting your online presence. So today we're going to talk everything about external traffic and external search ads, what it is, why is it important, and how are advertisers leveraging external search to scale their business on Amazon. So without further ado, I'll let Patrick and Adrian do a quick intro and share their expertise. You muted, Patrick. <laughs> Muted myself purposely. I was looking in our internal chat and it seems that the link is broken for people to prevent them from joining. Um, I guess we'll just continue on and maybe we can, someone in the background can see if they can help them join. Um, so yeah, happy to introduce um, one of my favorite people to work with, Adrian from Branded. If you're on the Perpetua webinar, I think you probably uh, know a little bit about Perpetua, who we are. Um, but I'll let Adrian introduce himself and Branded. Um, Branded is uh, one of the most sophisticated Amazon advertisers that we've come across. Uh, and I'd love for you to kind of give us a little spiel about who Branded is and what, and what you're doing there. Yeah, sure. So Branded is an aggregator. Uh, we've been in this space for a bit more than two years now, two years and a half, I believe. We have something around 45 brands uh, in the Amazon ecosystem, uh, different kind of categories. Uh, and myself, I've been on board for two years, uh, trying to crack the external traffic secret sauce, uh, doing most of the external traffic, which means everything but PPC, that's how we call it, uh, at branded. So from DSP, social media ads, Google ads, you know, influencers, affiliates, and so on. Awesome. Across your 45 brands, do you have any brands that are your favorite or that you love working on? Yeah, I mean, there is a couple that I've, really like one is called Puracy. Uh, it's a brand that our consumer likes a lot. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, it's a household brand. And as well as Ototo, which is the funniest brand that we have, we'll talk about it a bit later. Yeah, I, I knew of Puracy for a while and Ototo I came to learn. I think it's like one of the best for social media. Um, yeah. And yeah, we will get into that a bit later, but uh, awesome brands. Um, so all of that to say is you know, you're not just learning from someone who's working on one brand uh, in one category or one niche, but really, you know, someone who has exposure to a wide range of brands ranging from, I would say, household names on Amazon, like Piracy is probably the top, like natural home goods company, um, all the way down to more niche and uh, probably more private label type brands. Um, so seen it all, experienced it all, and has a really good framework for understanding when and how and what to look at when you're activating um, kind of external traffic uh, driving back to your Amazon page. So uh, in today's session, I don't know, do you want to go over this, Matilda? Or um... Um, So today, Adrian and Patrick will talk a lot about what is it, what are the types of um, external traffic, when should advertisers start to leverage external traffic and how they would activate them through, especially through Perpetua and some of the important KPIs for each type of external traffic. So Patrick and Adrian will now talk about what it is. Yep, so Adrian touched on it briefly in the beginning, but I think a great definition is external traffic is any traffic that you're sending to your store page or your products that isn't coming directly from on Amazon. So external traffic could be, you know, search engines like Google, Bing, could be social media, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, um, as well as some of the Amazon, Amazon off Amazon advertising inventory that they've begun uh, releasing, such as sponsored display and DSP. I think 
a good framework for understanding, you know, what, when, and how to activate these ads is also understanding where in the funnel these different kind of sources of traffic live. So Adrian, you know, from your experience, where would you place these different sources of traffic? If you imagine, you know, Amazon PPC being the lowest funnel, people are on Amazon looking to buy, searching a product. Where would you rank kind of search engine, social media, and then DSP? Uh, so like Patrick said, I mean, uh, external traffic gives the possibility to, you know, have a more uh, full funnel strategy, I believe. Uh, us at Branded, we tested like the different levels, the different channels at different level. But, you know, now I think, you know, in order to drive awareness, definitely social media uh, is the best. And I think also because of different aspects that we're going to talk about later. So social media is probably on top, as well as DSP of Amazon. You know, there is uh, audiences targeting that allow ourselves uh, to go really upper funnel using DSP. And I would put all the search engines more in a middle funnel strategy, not in, at least for us, uh, going down to PPC when we will be on Amazon. Yeah. From the framework of understanding different external traffic, um, it's important to know what type of traffic lives in what part of the funnel as it's going to inform when you should begin activating it, how you should begin activating it, as well as um, kind of the KPIs that you look at because some are applicable for some types of external traffic while others aren't super applicable. So um, really important to understand when and where uh, you're using this uh, as part of the marketing strategy. So jumping forward, um, let's talk about the different types of external traffic. The first, which we wanted to go to because it's most similar to um, Amazon PPC is search traffic. So Google, Bing, any other search engine uh, as basically modeled off Google's ad stack, which is a combination of product listings as well as search ads. So people very similar to Amazon will search, up will come above the fold if it's a product search, these Google shopping ads, Bing shopping ads, um, these drive direct to consumer as well as to Amazon um, and any other retailer that you might be selling. You kind of get to dictate on the product page where you want to send the traffic. Um, interestingly enough, and something we'll get into is uh, Amazon might also be buying this traffic for you. Uh, it's something we'll get into a little later. But Adrian, from your experience, have you seen Amazon buying external traffic for you? And what do you think of uh, when it comes to criteria, that's going to say Amazon, yep, we're going to be sending you free traffic from off Amazon. So what we noticed most of the time is like the Euro products. Uh, you can see them on shopping ads. You know, you can, you, you know what rates coming from Amazon when it's actually directing directly to Amazon because only them can do it. Uh, we've been seeing on, you know, the Euro products that, when, that are well ranked on which we have a high conversion rate. So most likely you don't have to pay for those because Amazon will do it for you. Yep. And it's safe to say we would consider these like mid to lower funnel. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's always really, really dedicated and precise keywords. You know, so it's not going to be broad. Cool. Next would be social media. So another type of external traffic that people have begun experimenting with um, is social media. So TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all the way up to Twitch. Um, basically, how I would define this is where people aren't necessarily going to search and buy, but people are being influenced and learning and becoming aware of products and uh, brands. So another type of media that we will get into um, from this perspective, is this something that you activate kind of across your brands broadly, or is there some sort of strategy that you have when you begin thinking about activating social media? So yeah, social media, we use it quite a lot for the biggest brand that we have. Uh, I mean, there is also some brand which I believe are more social, you know, friendly. Uh, so that's something that we definitely activate, particularly for special events when there is promotion, product launch, and also but particularly to drive awareness to our brand. So we're going to talk about that more in details after. Cool. The last two types of kind of external traffic that we classify as external are Amazon's own off Amazon traffic sources. So there's Amazon sponsored display, as well as you flip to the next one, um, Amazon DSP. I think of these things as very similar sponsored display being um, like an automatic campaign where you have kind of limited audience targeting, um, but still using Amazon's 1P data, as well as um, the DSP, which is more like the manual campaign where you can get very granular with targeting um, where you're actually serving the ads, et cetera. 
Um, so we won't talk about these in depth because um, we're really focusing on external non-Amazon traffic, um, but definitely something that you can consider external traffic when you come to marketing dollars. So this is something that I think you're gonna be able to speak to very well is basically like, when are you ready to actually begin activating external traffic? Um, if you think about the funnel, there's a lot of low hanging fruit that exists on Amazon directly. So the first kind of check mark that we both came up with is around listings and Amazon SEO. I'll let you talk Adrian a bit about kind of the branded process around listings and kind of how you get to a point where you're ready to even begin advertising on Amazon or off Amazon. So yeah, like first thing first, I completely agree with that. I mean, optimization of uh, PDP in stores, I think are the key to success to start with. I mean, if you start driving, you know, uh, traffic to a non-performing landing page, most likely and particularly on Amazon, the sales going to go to uh, your competitors. You know, we're talking about all the copywriting in it, all the description, but as well as A plus content. So, I mean, you know, I don't think there is much to say more than like, you need to have all this, you know, sorted before actually spending in, the, in that direction. And do you have some sort of like check mark criteria that you look at? Is there kind of like it passes someone's test and then it's ready for advertising or is it more of like a continual process and you kind of experiment as you go? It's a continual process. I mean, we have a lot of different brands, a lot of different brand managers which are continually testing things between their brands. And like once there is like a good practice or a sharing, you know, you have to know also according to the product or the vertical in which you are, it's not always exactly the same. But that's something that is continuously under test for us. You know, that's, I mean, it's never, it's never finished, but there is at least, you know, yeah, some sort of checklist that needs to be done. Yeah. Cool. And then the next step before I think both of us agree in kind of activating external traffic or more mid to upper funnel traffic is around Amazon PPC. Um, sponsored ads are the lowest funnel possible. Someone's there on Amazon looking to buy. Um, how do you think about kind of capping out your sponsored ads before you begin investing in more of the mid to upper funnel um, activations? So on our side, uh, we always have the word incrementally in our ads. You know, it's really under important to understand, you know, uh, how the ecosystem works. You know, there is a lot of things about ranking. There is a lot of uh, categories which are way more competitive than others. You know, there is a lot of tools that are provided by partners from Amazon, such as Helium 10 or other, you know, uh, tools that you can find instead of Central. You know, the right understanding of where you should be, where you can get some opportunities as well, uh, is like, you know, the key to success to PPC. You know, having a proper PPC strategy with incremental, just making sure you will not get, you will not actually pay for, so that will actually come by itself. Uh, it's really important for us. So that the first thing before starting to spend anywhere, we always start to have like a proper PPC strategy set up for any of our brands. So you, it's safe to say you kind of have some threshold where you reach a level of spend and you're like, this is yeah. enough for us. It's time to... No, to definitely. Yeah. I mean, we can see at some point. Anyway, you know, we do, you know, simple uplift tests as well, you know. Uh, at some point when we see that, you know, adding, you know, you know uh, some keywords or bidding, you know, higher will not actually drive anything incremental. So when we feel like we reach that point, that we found the right balance, you know, the, the sweet spots, that's where we consider, you know, opening other channels. Yeah, I guess the secret sauce is really that sweet spot. Um, and we'll let you we'll let you keep that uh, for yourself. But as you mentioned, there's a ton of great tools out there. Um, one we did a previous masterclass on search query performance um, is really great for uh, testing incrementality. Um, so kind of seeing like does more dollars into that search term actually provide more conversion on that search term. Um, I would say before you think about external search, be running those tests and kind of confident that you're not going to see incremental return by spending another dollar on Amazon. Because mm -hmm. again, as we kind of get into the external stuff, sure, sure there's a ton of upside, but it's definitely not kind of dollar for dollar as efficient as you're going to be able to find uh, so long as the, those opportunities still exist. So now we can get into the meat of external traffic and you know, your listings are great. You've maxed out your PPC. Where do you begin to think about spending your next dollar? Um, so my personal belief is you go to kind of search engines where it's more apples to apples with um, Amazon sponsored ads, where it's kind of keyword intent um, matched to products and product informational pages. 
curious, Adrian, once you max out PPC, what would be the next dollar you spend? So I kind of understand your, your, your point of view there because, you know, you have already the knowledge on the keywords, etc. So you can kind of replicate your strategy. But like, I personally like the, the DSP as a second, uh, second channel for the reason that I think PPC and DSP are going really well together, uh, particularly when you think about DSP as an upper funnel strategy. Awesome. So in addition to all the benefits you're going to get, we also want to set the stage for other benefits that you will get from driving external traffic. Something Adrian mentioned was around rank and the importance of rank for Amazon. Um, if you hit the next slide, um, you know, there's just benefit from being where people are searching and finding your product. This graphic was really popular a few years ago where it was like, oh, Amazon's taking over, like over 50% of product searches now start on Amazon. Um, well, that's great. And, you know, it definitely shows the prominence of uh, Amazon and its behavior, its uh, influence on purchasing behavior. There's still a ton of product searches that are beginning off of Amazon. So once you kind of cap out number one source, you have to begin thinking about where are these other searches coming and how can we profitably attack them? And then additionally, uh, if you hit the next slide, um, Amazon actually has a ton of free organic traffic not organic on search results, but outside of search results that they will send you. So we talked about Amazon actually buying Google ads on your behalf for kind of category leading products, rank one to five on hero keywords. They actually are incentivized to send the traffic to Amazon so long as it's profitable. So if they you know make some money on the conversion, they know how much you're spending on the ad. Um, so they're spending a ton of money on Google ads for their top performing products. So by sending external traffic uh, yourself, you can begin to, you know, increase your rank if you're kind of capped out on PPC to the point where you actually might be able to get into the Amazon quote unquote top organic products. And then they're going to begin to send you a ton of free traffic. So whether it be Google ads, some Amazon newsletters, there's a ton of free traffic that Amazon sends to their most loved products and external search and external traffic, social media, et cetera, are one of the best ways to help catapult you into that threshold, which will then unlock that further feedback loop where you're going to begin to get a ton of sales from, from other places. Uh, so much so that if you hit the next slide, um, hit one more slide here. Um, we actually did a test where we looked at a product and we looked at the search query performance for all of the different, um, all of the different sales on given keywords for that product. And we summed it up and compared it to the total sales of that product. And what we found was over 30% of sales are actually coming from this quote unquote unknown free traffic from Amazon. So it's safe to say that, you know, if you're able to crack the code and really get into that rank, there's a ton of opportunity for you and listings as well as external listing optimization, as well as external traffic are kind of one of two of the best ways to help further add fuel, to get you into that threshold to begin unlocking some of this great traffic that Amazon has. And then lastly, Amazon has begun subsidizing um, external traffic. So Amazon wants you to experiment, wants you to drive sales on their platform. They've released something, I think came out over two years ago now called the Amazon brand referral bonus. Um, so on average, they're gonna give you 10% of attributed sales as a bonus. So you sell thousand dollars, you're going to get a hundred dollar credit in your seller account. Um, and this is just incentivizing you and subsidizing the cost of your ads to again, just drive more uh, traffic to your, to your Amazon listings. It's not 10% for every category. It kind of varies depending on product niches, et cetera. But um, on average, it's about 10%. Sweet. Um, and so we're going to start uh, by discussing my favorite, which is kind of the search and kind of mid mid funnel external traffic that exists. Again, it's kind of more apples to apples than you have with, uh, with Amazon ads. So there's a few different types of search ads that appear. So number one is Google shopping ads. It's the same on Bing. Um, so any product related search on Google will come up with above the fold products. Um, you're able to create your own product pages and begin bidding. It's a very similar system to Amazon. It's pay-per-click, you bid on keywords, 
and up, up pops your products. If you hit the next slide, you can see here, it's very similar to Microsoft. So all of the search engines basically have copied the same ad stack. One thing to note is Google specifically doesn't like you driving traffic directly to Amazon. So you do have to install multiple ways to buy on these product pages or else Google will um, flag you and take your ads down. So if you have a DTC site, you can add a, you know, optionality to buy there. If you're selling on other retailers, Walmart, Target, et cetera, as long as you have multiple options to buy, you will not get flagged, but it's one of the biggest complaints and hardest things to solve if you are Amazon only, um, but something to keep in mind and maybe incentive to open up other places to purchase for your consumers. So how are people actually activating these ads? Um, so it's something that we work on very closely with Branded and it's something that's taken a long time to refine. Um, I think, you know, the first version was people trying to copy Amazon sponsored ads by kind of taking their keyword list and, you know, setting up attribution links and bidding and trying to send traffic directly to Amazon. But I think it's important that we kind of dive deeper into the purchase pass that people are actually taking on these search engines to understand how and what you should really be structuring your ad campaigns around. So look at the next slide here. So um, something that we've worked on very closely and something that Branded was a very um, great partner early on with was beginning to understand how to differentiate the buying funnel that exists within these different search engines. So V1 of our Google product, maybe some people uh, were around at Perpetual long enough um, to try it was what I've just mentioned. We kind of bid on the keywords that you're bidding on Amazon, send it to Amazon directly and hope for the best. But what we found was we had a very, very low conversion rate and it made it very difficult um, to actually drive profitable conversions on any of these ads, as well as the scale was limited because it was so expensive it was tough to actually bid and, you know, grow these ads. So what we've begun to look into was kind of optimized landing spaces for different search intent. So if someone searches easy curler or iron curler Amazon, it's a safe bet that you should be driving that traffic directly to Amazon, whether it be your product page or your store page. And that was really the only keywords that we were able to scale successfully was someone direct search intent something, something, Amazon, coffee, Amazon. But what we found is a majority of the scale on Google and these other search engines is more around mid-funnel informative searches. Like what is the best French press? What is my fa favorite curling iron for formal attire? Um, so people not really searching directly for a product, but trying to learn about a product or a category of products before I ending up making that purchasing decision. So we've begun to build out different flows and landing pages that ultimately drive back to Amazon, but are more aligned with what people are searching on and kind of learning about within, um, within that search engine. So if you hit the next slide, um, that's exactly what we've done. If you hit slide one more. Um, so there are two different pathways that we've begun testing. So the first pathway is any words that are low funnel direct to Amazon. We will build ads that link directly out to either the store page or the product page, depending on the search intent. Um, Adrian, I think you have some experience previously running Google ads. Would you say your experience kind of aligns with what we had kind of limited scale driving directly yeah. to Amazon? Yeah, it was exactly the problem that we had. Like first way one, when we get like in really dedicated keywords, uh, is really limited into skills. Like the only skills that we could find is just like multiplying the number of async we were working on. Uh, so, you know. It's definitely like to go back to what you were saying before. I think there is way more scalability on the mid funnel, like you said before, the, like the top kind of product, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So because we, we had the pathway one for quite some time, uh, which was interesting, but you know, you're not gonna make big difference, you're not gonna get drive like that much traffic at the end of the day. Uh, it might also be also traffic that you would have uh you know had already as a sale if you already ranked on this on this keyword. So like, you know, getting into broader queries, you know, longer queries, long tail queries, I think is, you know, the right way in order to be able to, to get additional sales, new to brand sales, which is actually what we're looking for with it. Awesome. And then the second flow that we built out was kind of these custom landing pages. So 
we were lucky that chat GPT um, has made a big kind of uh, growth over the last six months, but basically using a combination of product information from Amazon, as well as chat GPT, we're able to build out custom landing pages based on the query that people are searching. So as I mentioned, you know, there's a ton of different long tail informational searches that are happening on Google as well as other search engines. So we were able to create and are able to create mass variety of these landing pages. So if someone is searching best curling iron for beach hair or best curling iron for formal attire, um, we're able to very quickly create these different landing pages and have the user actually end up landing on one of those pages, learn about the product through the context of what they're actually searching for before then having the option to click out into Amazon and buy. So regardless if I think, you know, uh, regardless of how you're running the traffic right now, I think landing page testing, A-B testing, multiplying is really the key that we found to successfully scaling search engine performance at a profitable, um, profitable target. So all of that to say is if you are running these external ads, specifically search ads, I think it's important to really understand what people are searching, why they're searching it, and being able to direct them to the right place, uh, which has led to drastically better performance than the V1 product that we had initially rolled out. So we have a quick case study here, I think, or no. So how, how do we measure the impact? Um, we'll get to the case study after. Um, so I guess, Adrian, from your perspective, what are the important things to measure and what does branded look at across their brands um, when, you, when it comes to these, these search engine uh, external traffic? So like you, like you're actually seeing on the, on, the, on the slide, something that we're looking at a lot is new to brands. Uh, what we consider when people have looked, those kind of requests that like, you know, uh, first that it will be incremental and most likely will be new customers. Otherwise, we have most likely you know, went in the direction of branded search. So uh, new to brand customers is definitely something that we always monitor when we're doing you know, those kind of efforts. We're looking at attributed sales, but not only, you know, uh, using Amazon attribution. But yeah, definitely, you know, uh, increase of volume of research, uh, new to brand customers uh, is definitely what we're looking for, you know, in this kind of strategy, strategy. Awesome. And I'll pause it here. I know we have quite a few brands and people on. Um, if you want to throw in any, any of the comments, like, are you running any external search ads like Google, Bing? Do you have any experience, good or bad? Um, would love to hear any experience that anyone's had so far, because I would say, Historically, people have had very bad experiences with it, um, but as kind of more and more experimentation and things come out, I think there's interesting use cases that even we haven't thought of yet um, and always trying to learn. So if anyone is running good or bad, um, feel free to comment. Would love to hear, um, would love to hear your experience. Yeah, from, from my experience, and at least at the beginning, what the other spot to have is like consistency in terms of results. You know, it's hard to be consistent with evergreen strategy in the first place. That's why, you know, we need to, we thought about, you know, bringing the strategy up in the funnel, which I think makes more sense uh, right now on Amazon. Yeah, beginning to look at metrics that aren't directly attributed yeah. to those. Exactly. Yeah, I think what also makes it hard and something that, you know, Google is great when you can feed back into its optimization algorithm, like direct attributed sales, but mm -hmm. something that, is never probably going to happen is the ability to integrate the Amazon attribution back into Google. So mm -hmm. Google has like its own optimization algorithm where if you're selling directly from your DTC or other sites where you can pixel, it can learn who is purchasing and, you know, begin to really refine their own ads with Amazon attribution. You have the 48 hour delay before you even see a sale and you can't actually feed that data back into uh, Google. So it really makes it tough to rely on Google's data to help you. You really have to be experimenting and looking in it yourself to come up with these kind of conclusions around where and how you should be spending, um, which is unfortunate, but uh, makes it a little bit more fun, I guess. <laughs> Would you say there are specific categories that work particularly really well with external search ads versus the others? And what are some of the categories that are just like no brainer, you should definitely run search ads? Mm, from my experience, I know like the cooking related categories are working pretty well. Uh, and it's actually quite specific. Uh, I mean, it depends actually on the brands. Like, if the brand is 
too original or anything like that. So not really. But like, yeah, the cooking space, everything around house all in cooking space is actually a pretty good performer on Google. Yeah, we've seen beauty absolutely crush it. Um, so I was saying curling iron just because we've been looking at the performance of a curling iron. It's been absolutely crushing. So beauty is great. And then hardware and like tools have also been absolutely crushing it. Um, we have a supplier who sells uh, Tesla floor mats and like the return is 100x better than what they're getting on Amazon. So I think it's tough to say without a doubt it's going to work. That's the whole thing about external search is it's tougher to evaluate and tougher to know with certainty if I bid on this word, it's going to work. Um, so it's all experimentation. And uh, I would say we just hope to like make the dice roll better. If you're using enough data, it's still a dice roll. But if your odds are better than the house, uh, it can come up with, with great results. Sweet. Um, and yeah, speaking about you know cooking and home goods, uh, here's a case study that we had um, with a uh, mixer. So here, again, um, used a bunch of those different purchase paths, created different landing pages for the product. And we were able uh, to hit almost a 400% ROAS, so 25% ACoS, um, which again for external search uh, is you know, deemed fairly good. Um, not to say that everyone will achieve this, but uh, it's safe to say that there are a lot of good opportunities and a lot of efficiency to be had, so long as you experiment, kind of time gate that experiment. So you, know, you, you won't spend indefinitely, but I think giving, giving it three to six weeks where you're constantly experimenting with the keywords, where you're driving the traffic, will give you a good understanding if your product uh, is a good fit for, for this type of traffic. Sweet. And then another topic that I love, and I would say is even harder to crack than search ads, is social media. Um, I would say that Branded has done an exceptional job at kind of one, creating their own brand pages on social media. I think that's undervalued right now. There's a lot of hype around kind of influencer marketing and hiring influencers to, um, to promote your product. But would love to hear how you approach creating branded presence for your brands as well as when and how do you begin activating with creators? So yeah, like social media has been quite of a trick at the beginning, you know, because at the beginning of it, we were really looking at making attrib attributed sales. And uh, I mean, uh, attributed Amazon attribution is not really good at tracking anything from social media. So a bit like we did with Google, we went up a funnel. Uh, what we thought is like, you know, we want to bring awareness. We want to look into making our brands, you know, uh, known brands, looking, uh, having people looking actually for it. So what we did is we actually created social media pre presence for the one which we thought were relevant. We actually have our own content creators uh, making a lot of organic content. We as well working with small influencers, you know, doing some kind of gifting gifting strategy the ideas is like you know really trying to pull continuously some some uh, some uh, some content you know building a community like on the right side you have like ototo on which we managed to drive millions and millions of views on uh, on our product but i think you know after you can leverage you know those community for special events you know like such as promotions product launch you know even like the black fridays and so on so really big lever you know to get awareness and to drive new customers to your brands and, you know, bringing, you know, like uh, a lot of, you know, branded search. I'm going to talk about this after, but yeah, that was really the goal, you know. We need to think up a funnel when we think about social media for marketing, for marketing on Amazon. Yeah, and we'll get into it where um, I think there's two challenges that exist with social media. One is the technical challenge where it's very difficult to actually get attribution data. So it's basically shot in the dark when it comes to getting attributed sales back from these platforms. But two is also like, you know, you have some idea of what search terms to be bidding on, you know, what keywords work, don't work for your product, where social media, something could go viral that you never think. And the stuff that you spend 10 hours producing gets a hundred views. So it's very, very difficult to have a succinct strategy around what content works. Um, and it's really an experimentation phase all the way through. So it's interesting seeing the metrics that we'll get into um, that Adrian and Branded team look at 
when it comes to evaluating performance, because I would say a lot of brands have become very ROAS focused when it comes to advertising as a function of Amazon providing such great data, but it's not something that's really realistic when it comes to this more upper funnel awareness type stuff, although it may drive, you know, incredible performance for you. So hit the next slide. Um, how are advertisers measuring performance right now? Um, as we got into, uh, if you hit next slide, the attribution that you actually get from these platforms is again, virtually non-existent. Um, we've run some tests using Amazon attribution links. So our estimate is about 75% of the traffic is unattributable. And looking at a direct apples to apples comparison from TikTok clicks. So we ran an ad on TikTok. We see we got a thousand clicks. Within that Amazon attribution link that people are clicking, we only saw 34% of those clicks. So it's safe to say that uh, the data you're getting isn't great. And that's because of the native browser experience that these um, platforms offer. So if you click a link within TikTok to Amazon, it's not taking you to the Amazon app. It's taking you to a native browser where if you do want to purchase, you're going to have to sign into your Amazon two-factor click and purchase, which very few people do, um, which makes it very difficult to actually get this clean data. So I'll let, uh, I'll let Adrian speak a little bit about this slide and kind of the other metrics that they're evaluating on how this is actually impacting the growth of their brands. So yeah, definitely what I was saying before, like, and like you just said, is like attribution is like so poor that uh, we went out of it. I'm honestly not really looking at it anymore when it's about social media. Now what we look at is branded search. You know, uh, we believe that, you know, a great, you know, things to look at in order to get new to brands and to get you to be sure that your company is working. You know, you have like different tools on Amazon uh, Seller Central, such as the search query metrics. And we've been uh, playing with that a lot. And social media is the one who's like actually having a strong impact. So like what I just shared as figures there is like the evolution of uh, brand search for this brand Ototo along the year. We started the social media strategy, I think like something of like a, a bit more than a year ago. And we've seen a strong impact on research. And, you know, at the end of the day, a number of new customers are actually uh, going through the brand uh, because of that. So maybe how do you can... value like a branded search? Is there some dollar amount that you put onto this? Or yeah, it... I mean, like I did different, you know, uh, framework for that. I mean, you know, what I did mainly, if I can make it in a nutshell, you know, you have like the top 100 queries that you have, you know, uh, uh, on your Amazon, Amazon accounts. So there is two things that we're looking at. Uh, first is a number of metric, a number of queries having your, you know, brand name in it as well as the overall volume, you know, and after I did like simple calculation, I took the top 100 ones. Uh, I took the AOV, you know, as that giving me, you know, an ID and I'm just, you know, you're just multiplying a few figures and that's giving you pretty much a price per branded search that you should be, you know, trying to aim. Mm. But you know that these particular queries generated this amount in terms of dollars, it's provided by Amazon. And so you're pretty much doing an average of all your top 100 queries. And that's giving you like how much you should be actually spending per branded search. I'm not, you know, uh, you know, that's just like a metric that we're looking at, you know, and I believe that's the right way for us now more to optimize our campaigns. You know, we're looking at it this way. Interesting. And so how does that influence spend? Are you, did you basically take the delta between your branded searches year over year and you said, this is how much we should be spending on yeah. social media? Yeah, that's something, I mean, what we're doing is like months over months, we see the actual evolution. Uh, we're doing like the simple uplift methods, you know, uh, when we activate and not activating uh, the, the social media. And uh, at the end of the day, we can see, you know, some particular brands. Like budget would be also de depending of if there is any particular event on the brand, you know, if you have like seven days, etc. Uh, but, you know, like... We, we, we have like single strategies according to the different brands that we have. You know, we have brand managers for each of them. So that's something that we work on. And uh, we, we identify for some of the brands to be great, one of the great levers. So we, we associate the budget according to what we believe we could be driving at the, according to the objective of branded search as we have. Interesting. Have you had any failures where you invested in TikTok and social media and you had no update? Yeah. I mean, we we had a few failures. I mean, it doesn't always work. It would be too easy otherwise. You know, sometimes 
I mean, maybe what was the hardest, you know, is when you pay overpay an influencer or something like that. So uh, I would not recommend to go in that direction. You know, building your own content, working with small influencers, doing paid ads at the right timing, you know, with the right content that you've been able to identify as being something, you know, that people, you know, uh, look at, you know, using, you know, we're using a lot of TikTok, you know, particularly TikTok, when uh, we have like, we can see in a couple of, you know, days, which content actually is the most relevant for the, for the audience. And, you know, we're just, you know, boosting this actual, actual content. If it's to a particular product, we're looking at uplift in terms of revenue as well, just to, you know, make us more confident about what we are doing. And, you know, week after week, we keep looking at the branded search metrics. Interesting. So I just put the Atoso um, TikTok in the chat. So I've taken a look at it. And who actually produces that content for you? Are you hiring creators to build the content? Or are you doing it in-house? Where well, it's actually in-house. Most of the content that you see organic on this, we have our own TikTok editors uh, for a few of our brands. And uh, it will constantly you know, be uh, making content. Uh, and we can see some of the... T- uh, Sometimes it, it's like multiple millions actually of views. So, I mean, that's been one of the... For this brand, I think the most efficient strategy that we had uh, this past year. And how much and time would you say your your team is putting into creating content for this brand? Is it something that you know everyone can do a couple hours a week, or did this take dedicated? I mean, there is like it's a dedicated person for this brand, like he, for each brand. It's pretty much his job. No, not for all the brand. This one's got a dedicated person, and some of them we split them between brands. But yeah, this one is a dedicated person. Awesome. All right, we got a question here. I have a question. It's still a bit unclear how to measure the conversions in Amazon while doing Google Ads. Do you have any recommendations? In the U, it's impossible to see sales in Amazon attribution. All you can see is impressions and clicks. A manipulative way. What should we do? Um, for Google Ads specifically, Amazon attribution tends to work very well because you're in kind of a cookied environment where Google is able to pass through all the user parameters. So... Amazon knows this click equals that sale. Um, Something you might be running into is it does have a 10 unique click minimum. So like if you're not driving that much traffic and you don't get 10 unique people to click the link, it will provide you zero zero data. Um, So for the most part, Amazon attribution works really well with Google, doesn't work well with the social media platforms. In the EU, it's impossible. We've never run actually in the EU. I'd be curious to know if it's something around, and Adrian's actually based in France, so maybe you know around like the GDPR compliance, or have you seen? Actually, actually, I never run in you this kind of ads, <laughs> so I would be. I was surprised when I saw that because I agree with you. Like Amazon attribution, I only look at it when we talk about Google Ads because I believe this is fairly accurate. We can see actually you know, the conversions coming in. Uh, I'm actually surprised by this. You know, we are actually expanding, so that's something that most likely I will be trying in the near future. Uh, but yeah, I'm surprised by this comment, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so happy to deep dive with you. I think you have our um, e- you have our emails. Like, we'd be happy to take a look and even share some of our data around. You know, I talked about TikTok clicks to Amazon attribution clicks being very different. Google to Amazon is basically 100 percent. Minus these weird ten click things, where if, you know you're not getting a ton of ton of traffic on that specific link. Um, additionally, you can create keyword parameters in the links. So when you're running Google Ads, um, you can get per keyword performance, so long as you set up the keyword parameter within the link. So you do get fairly clean data when it comes to, again, the search advertising. Um, and he said this is actually weird because you might, have, you might have a point with GDPR. It might be a reason. I mean, uh, might look into it, but it's interesting as a feedback. Yeah, that's my thought with TikTok and things as well as maybe there's iOS 14 privacy things where it doesn't pass the info through. Um, so maybe the same side, thing yeah, side tangent on uh, that. I did hear that Amazon is partnering with TikTok and Facebook and a couple other people to be able to use 1P Amazon data to target via TikTok ads, meta ads, et cetera. So you'll be able to take like retargeting and remarketing and things and actually push those audiences into those platforms. 
And if they're making a bet on that, I would assume that maybe behind the scenes, there's going to be broader talks around better attribution data um, so that you're actually able to holistically see. But for the time being, getting data back from social media is, is non-existent. Sweet. And yeah, I guess the last metric here is one that everyone always looks at. Um, I'm going to reverse this on you, Adrian, and say, what about LTV? So you mentioned that you have kind of a barometer for what a branded search is worth. Mm -hmm. Does lifetime value play into that? So yeah, lifetime value is really important for us. Uh, it is really complicated on Amazon to actually find out your actual lifetime value. So there's a few tricks that can be done in order to find out uh, more precisely uh, what could it be. Because, you know, for us, now that we're driving more upper funnels and that we're actually having investments outside of Amazon, it's really important for us to try to understand how much we pay per new customers. You know, in order to have a CAC target, you need to have a lifetime value. So there is different techniques that, you know, uh, can be done on Amazon. Because, you know, you have some reports in the brand analytics parts, but uh, I think they're only on the quarterly basis. You don't have the yearly basis. So sometimes it could be a bit hard to really understand what the lifetime value is. But there is a few tricks. I cannot talk about everything because, you know, we have our own secret source at Branded. But, you know, there is a few tricks that can be done to try to understand uh, what the volume of you know, new customers you're having and what is the repurchase rate uh, of your brand. That's a, quite a lot of manual work. But, uh, you know, it's, 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 I found this kind of crazy that sometimes, you know, Amazon is not providing this kind of data, but I think it's really essential for you to have actually an idea of, you know, if you're going in the right direction at the end of the day, because CAC is definitely one of the most important metrics for most of the brands that we have in. So do you use Amazon Marketing Cloud for LTV or is it a different? Yeah, different... I mean, we, Amazon Marketing Cloud, I mean, I know it's quite a complicated tool uh, in the first place, but that's something that we definitely use. I mean, including data from Amazon Marketing Cloud is really interesting. I think it's also really interesting because that's one of the only places where you can compare your different activations on Amazon as well. You know, there is different kind of reports, which I believe are quite relevant that could be done on branded search particularly, but also on overlap reports and other metrics uh, as well as on YouTube brands. So like using Amazon Marketing Cloud and, you know, customizing the queries, I think... Uh, it's a good way to understand better how you know how your brand is going. I think I might have heard that actually Amazon's gonna make it simpler in the future. Is it gonna be in a couple of months or in a year? I have no idea. But Amazon Marketing Cloud is a pretty powerful tool. You know, you you can try to get over it because there is template of queries in uh, in SQL. Uh, but I would advise people to to look into it to understand better what's happening with their brand. Awesome. Yeah. I think unlocking LTV can make it a lot easier to justify a lot of these things, especially, you know, I think being as large as you are looking at branded searches and lift there, like makes sense. But if you're a more, you know, cost conscious brand still in the growth phase, it becomes very difficult to justify that immediately. Mm -hmm. So if you have and good data on how much it's actually worth, it becomes easier and easier to, to begin spending. Yeah, sorry to cut you, but I think also, you know, to IMC is also a great tool to see the incrementality of the different action you're having, you know, just to make sure you're not cannibalizing an action with another. I think, mm -hmm. you know, like I just said before, overlap and stuff like that has really, you know, useful metrics you could get from there. Awesome. So I think that comes to the end of our um, talk. I know we talked about search ads as well as social media ads. Both are fairly fast moving. They're not as kind of solidified in the ecosystem as sponsored ads, but um, I hope that Adrian was uh, good enough to inspire you that there is opportunity and some of you know the most sophisticated, largest Amazon sellers in the space, if not the world, are you know experimenting and finding value there. So it's definitely kind of a lighthouse to go towards and everyone should begin thinking about how and when and what they should be activating as it pertains to a few of these different you know, life cycles of your brand that we've been talking about. Um, as always, happy to chat more at Perpetua. We do offer a lot of support around all of these different things. Um, so much so that we're even happy to just chat if you have questions like, does it work in the EU? Does it, you know, why aren't we seeing data? We're always here to help. Um, 
whether you're a customer or not. Um, so thank you everyone for listening. And if there are any questions, feel free to uh, drop it in the chat. Great, thank you, Adrian and Patrick for so many valuable insights. I personally learned a lot about Google um, external search ads and external traffic in general. Um, does anyone have any questions in the chat? And we'll also be sending out the recording as well. So happy to pick up the conversation offline, um, email hello at perpetual.io or reach out to us personally. All right. Enjoy the rest of your night, Adrian. And thanks everyone for joining. Thanks, Thank guys. You guys.